But right now, uh, let's go right to your phone calls. Drew in Colorado, you're on the air worldwide. Yeah, what's up, Alex? How are you doing today? Good, sir. Good to have you on with us. Thank you for having me on today. Do you see USA Today yesterday? Or is it published once a week or something? Because uh, I didn't uh, see it. No, what was it? The luxurious 250-square-foot apartment that everyone should be living in nowadays. Guys, will you pull up uh, USA Today, the new 250-square-foot apartment? Yeah, that's being pushed everywhere that... It's so trendy. They're gonna. They, they say they're gonna jack your taxes up so high, you can only live in a 250 square foot coffin apartment. Uh, Agenda 21 from Austin to San Francisco to New York. They're passing or trying to pass laws, which of course the establishment. I mean, imagine these are rent-seeking globalists, and of course they want to screw you. And yeah, there it is. Many apartments are the next big thing in U.S. cities. Yeah, because you're gonna be so incredibly poor. So chic and cool to be poor and treated like cattle. Oh, no, if you go to Whole Foods, literally, I've seen it where half the mags are. It's good to be poor. It lowers your carbon footprint. It's good to and it's so sexy. And, and they'll come over and say, you shouldn't have three kids. And they'll come over and say, you're shopping well. You've made good decisions. And I'm like, listen, I know this is overpriced, non-GMO stuff, and half of it's GMO. I'm just trying to, please, please don't, please don't nudge me. Please don't behaviorally modify me. Please don't do it. But they are. They're just authoritarians who think it's sexy to be slaves. Right. And, uh... All of us know how that story is going to end and how a new one will play out. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But Oh, but Oprah says again. it's good. Oprah. Oh, oh. I actually had um, Melissa Melton, one of our great reporters, and she was here with us. She went with Aaron off into the sunset to do their own reporting. They're doing a great job over at um, TrueStreamMedia.com. But but she, uh, she did a report on the coffin apartments we had her go out and do that was pretty good. We ought to dig that up and air that. Uh, towards the end of the hour. You know, I'm glad you bring that up, terrorist. You're not looking, because people have to understand, it's not to make it affordable. It's to jack up prices on everything. You're going to pay $10,000 a month of devalued dollars to live in a 250-square-foot coffin, surveilled 24-7 by men in black uniforms, backed up by drones and robots. How's that sound? It would be easier to scan your apartment that way to see if you have contraband in this country. You'll know. Yeah, but now Russia is becoming freer. It's incredible. Duh. Let's go ahead and talk to... Uh, Bob, Bob, you're on the air. Welcome, sir. Yeah, Alex, uh, I just want to say, first of all, 100 years from now, there'll be a statue of you on the mall in D.C. But I well, 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 I'd rather just, just have my grandkids be able to be, live, but yeah, whatever, who knows? What I wanted to ask you about was, what do you know about Jeffrey McDonald, the Green Beret doctor who was convicted of killing his family in, the, I believe it was the 70s? Is that the case that woke up uh, the FBI section chief uh, when he found out it was a whole satanic operation? That was... Yeah. Um, Is there anything you can add to that? Because I've been trying to find out... Some no, no, that's what that woke Ted Gunderson up. He was, I think at that time, he was the head of all of Southern California, the biggest FBI division outside New York. And he didn't believe it, and he found out a satanic cult did it. It was all a setup. And uh, now we just know that stuff's main. I got a stack of news about Satan cults and kids and government and media uh, here today. I haven't even gotten to it yet. But yeah, no, it's a big issue. Okay, thanks, Alex. Take care of yourself. Uh, Mr. Thank you. Did you want to add anything to it? I mean, uh, no, I. No, I've just been trying to gather gleaning bits and pieces of the story, but there's not much out on it. I know I heard the Gunderson tape, and he had spoke to it a while back before he died. You know, it's horrible. Uh, I wish what Teddy Gunderson said wasn't true, but I kept going and looking it up, and now everything he said came true. But, I mean, he exposed the CIA finders, uh, snuff films of little kids and stuff in D.C. Nobody got in trouble. That, by the way, came out in the newspapers. I mean, it, it, nobody got in trouble. I mean, just unbelievable. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Coming up, Rand Paul strongly hints at 2016 presidential run. Massive solar flare narrowly misses Earth. EMP disaster barely avoided. Lloyds of London is concerned. Artificial human ear grown in lab. We'll get into some science news, some important military news, U.S. to conduct joint military exercises 
in Egypt. You already know Snowden's been granted one year temporary asylum in Russia. I'll give you the latest on that we haven't gotten to uh, yet. And we are also going to get into the new Fed chairman they're looking at, Larry Summers. I mean, that, there's few people you can get worse than Geithner or uh, people like uh, you know, who's at Treasury or uh, Ben Bernanke. But I mean, Summers is the, the main, one of the main authors with Clinton of getting rid of Glass-Steagall and creating the pump and dump garbage with all the derivatives. Uh, it's just unbelievable. So we're going to be looking at that. More persecution of libertarians and conservatives by the IRS. That's all coming up, and it's at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, the stories we were just mentioning. Uh, right now, let us go back to your phone calls. Bill in Iowa, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex. How you doing? Good, sir. Hey, Alex. I'm a long-time listener, and... Um it's interesting when you say that uh, all this news that we have, it's so distracting us from the real things that are going on. And look, last week you were saying that um, we have a chance that humanity can beat this new world order. And I disagree with that, sir. Um, humanity can't win. I mean, the Antichrist and his one world government, it's coming, whether we like it or not. And it's going to get so bad that Jesus has to come back and go to war against them. And, and this is real, sir. This is so real. And people need to understand that. And every day, I, I just want you to bring that up. I mean, it doesn't have to be all three hours, but please, we have new listeners coming in every day. I mean, this is for people's souls. And um, I'm praying for you every day, Alex. I appreciate what you're doing. Well, let me just quantify this for a moment, Bill. So stay there. I'm going to go back to you in a second. Number one, most people on the planet aren't Christians. Maybe one out of five is a Christian of some type, and they're all fighting with each other over what the Bible really says. You know, let's say out of two billion people are Christians. So maybe two out of two out of seven, if you count seven million people and around two billion, say they're Christians. And most of Christianity has just turned into a big country club deal and everybody's saying that other group's wrong and we're in the end club. It's like a country club. I'm just here to try to preserve basic dignity and, 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 and human liberty and to not beat people over the head with things. And I see most of the churches I go to, I don't care if they're Baptist or Methodist or if I go with one of my friends to, you know, before to his Catholic church, it's the same thing. Uh, well, don't worry about anything as the world's about to end next month. And for me, it's the ultimate, 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 ultimate cop-out. Let's say the Antichrist is going to show up in 10, 20 years. I'm sick of always hearing it's going to be 1987 and 1992 and 1999 and these preachers, you know, saying it and just obsessing and this event in the Middle East is this and this is that. And then they said the same event over and over again. And it's going to happen on this date. No man knoweth that if you supposedly are a Christian. But these people will obsess over it. Christ said, don't obsess over that. It's our job regardless to go out and to help people be aware of the tyranny that's happening and to help the innocents and the children they're going to abort and the orphans they're using and abusing and the, and, and the, and, and the GMO and the, and the chemicals and the really bad stuff you know, at the uh, fast food places. None of us are perfect, but we're all trying to get towards something better. Our world's so poisoned, it's, it's, it's hard to find anything that's, quote, perfect. You know, too much water is bad for you. But it's about trying to be good. It's not about saying, I'm good, I'm going to tell you how to be. It's about, hey, I want to be good. I want to build something better. I want to be a better person because it's fulfilling. That's what's satisfying. People think they're going to become satisfied being nasty and evil and manipulating people like, I've been done wrong, so I'm going to be bad to other people. That is not the way it works. That's why I have forgiven people that have lied about us and attacked us and done horrible things. Because if they're just having a hard time and obviously dumbed down and twisted, and you can see that with discernment, that they're just having problems and they're not inherently evil, then it's best to forgive them. Because hating them, you know, just gives into the whole thing and to try to help them. Now, if somebody's consciously evil and psychopathically manipulative, they're the enemy and have to be dealt with. But then I don't enjoy crushing them. They've got to be, you know, done away with like you do... You know, a cat you're putting asleep because it has brain tumors. Uh, 
But good people have to realize that we're not supposed to be wimps either and just walk around and, you know, that that's Christ-like because that's not actually who Christ was. It's the opposite. The money changers, the manipulators of society, they're the real enemy. They're the plague. And Christ beat them with a whip and overturned their tables. We have to politically and psychologically do that. And the Bible says the beast will wage war on the saints and overcome them. But through that, you'll have the greatest awakening revival the world's ever seen. The people have to be tested to show who they really are. And you are not going to be raptured. The Bible does not say that until clearly after the Antichrist has been tied by the archangel and thrown into the pit. Or I guess thrown into his cage for a thousand year display. And so if anybody believed any of the Bible, whether you believe it's real or not, what the churches are preaching is not there. The dead in Christ rise and then the living. And the Muslims interpret that that all everybody's just going to die. Everybody's just, when Christ comes back, everybody just dies. Like, oh, wonderful, we're all, you know, they'll probably think when everybody's dying from bioweapons that the Christ has come, the Christ has come. Hail Bob, hail Bob. I, don't, I think that's figurative there as well. And people get really obsessed. They don't care if we love justice and are against abortion. We have to agree with their pharisaical can't dealing with what the Bible really says. And I reject all of it. I just want to be a good person. I want to stand up against evil. I want to try to build people up. I don't claim to be good or you know, two shoes. Quite frankly, I am as, I'm a wicked devil, folks. I'm a black devil. You want to know who Alex Jones is? I'm, I'm, I am a reprieved uh, person trying not to backslide. And by devil, I mean I can see and think all the things the New World Order does. I am inherently super wicked, ladies and gentlemen. But my good side is even bigger than that, and that's what I choose. And every day I get closer and more Christ-like by increments. I'm still, I mean, a flaming devil, ladies and gentlemen. The real deal. And that's how I know the enemy. I can look right at them and see what they are. I don't even run into many devils that are as evil as I am. Because if you've thought it, you've done it, folks. And I can understand evil. I know the mystery of good and evil. Like I just took a bite right out of that fruit, okay? I mean, I, I got it. And that's why I know who the enemy is. I don't want any part of it. It's really bad. But just knowing it is a sin. Because to know it is to be in communion with it. It's the knowledge of good and evil, ladies and gentlemen. The ancients, before they fell, had the knowledge of good and were innocent. They, you know, that they they were aggressive, they hunted, they did whatever, but they didn't have the knowledge of sin, the technology. The Bible says in the end times, the wicked will run about to, like like mad beasts, inventing new new sins, new evils. Think of all there are new things under the sun being invented, and that's where I stand on that. Um, I know the way GMO and everything's going. The things described in Revelation, boy, if, they, if it's hidden real, they had a time machine. You know, insect-looking craft dropping things out that make pillars of fire the size of mountains, nuclear war. Uh, plagues killing a third of the world's service, the ocean dying. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 um, even if you don't believe it, the globalists have taken it as a model, as a template. So thank you, Bill. I, uh, do, do you have any other comments to that? Uh, that you'd like to talk about. Yes, sir, I do. Um, I agree with everything you're saying. Um, and just like you, I seek the truth in everything. Both of my parents are pastors, and I actually went to school. So I thought about going to seminary. And I just want you, Alex, to please question um, why you call yourself a Christian. Uh, yeah, there you go. I know the only thing that satisfies you guys is talk. Look, you're, you're, I understand it. And I've got family that are Baptists that are like this. Listen, it's a Pharisee deal about how you've got to tell everybody about are you a good Christian all day and, and, and mess with them so much they're going to go, no, I'm a devil worshiper. I'm going to go party. Shut up and leave me alone. You, you don't understand that. And I appreciate your call. I mean, it is the religion is not henpecking everyone. You know, the Pharisees came to Christ and said, you're with money changers. You are with tax collectors. You're with prostitutes. You're with people that do unclean plumbing. Well, you know, what are you doing? He goes, well, these are the people that will listen to me. You go up on your hill, up there on the Sabbath, and you'd pray in front of everybody in public. 
and tell everybody how great you are. We all know what's really going on. And, and I'm telling you, it's a country club. Most Christians I know have arrived at the most elite country club in the world, and all they do is sit around reproving each other and, and talking about how great they all are and how good they all are just constantly, and that is why everyone is running from Christianity because what's being pushed is not Christianity. Now, I said I'd take a lot of calls. That was an important call. I spent a lot of time on it, but I'm done. Hey, I already told you I'm as wicked as the day is long, okay? What I'm telling you is, is that I see the good in you. You have to see the good in me. And it's not like some hallucination where everything's so evil, you can't do anything but just like, I see these Christians, they just shuffle around with their hands out, and they go, uh, uh, like NPR slaves or something. And they just shuffle around and worship their preacher, and he's God while he's got, you know, a mistress, and you know, all the stuff out the back. It's just all a bunch of bull, man. I mean, I just do not need to hear it anymore. Okay, you'll you want to hear you want to hear less Christianity on the show? And have more calls like that. I mean, I just I'm not here to be part of your club. I'm not here to show you that I'm contrite to you because you are not God. God knows my heart. That's who I've got a relationship with. I don't need churches. I don't need to pray up on the hilltop in front of everybody. We'll be back. Stay with me. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Let me tell you why I don't like the big mega churches, even if their preachers preach a pretty good sermon. Because I go to a lot of different churches in town. And, I mean, they should be telling their, their congregation of like 5,000 people, now let's all go March Monday down to the abortion clinic. And, or let's take turns, you know, marching around it like Gideon. Uh, until, you know, see how many babies we can save. I mean, no, 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 it's all just, oh, no, we don't do that. That violates 501c3. No, it doesn't. Besides, you're not supposed to be a charity. You're a church. First Amendment. These preachers don't know anything. Or they just want to sell out to the system. Just don't get me started. <laughs> just do not get me started. Mm, boy, these government-run churches want to just sit there and henpeck everybody, and I won't put up with it. Let's go ahead and talk to, uh, let's take a call from Italy. I didn't see that. I'd have gone to them earlier. Dylan in Italy, um, what, uh, I heard you're calling in about the pressure cooker article uh, where, where if you uh, search for pressure cookers or backpacks, you get a police visit now uh, via Google. Talk about NSA. Go ahead. Absolutely. I'd just like to know what in the hell is a quinoa? Say that again. What in the what is a what? What in the hell is a keen wall? I don't know. Are you really calling from Italy? I am. I'm, I'm, I am. <laughs> I appreciate your call, Dylan. I, I'm having trouble with your audio, understanding exactly what you're saying. Thank you. Ray in Texas. Ray, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shortly after World War II, President Harry S. Truman met with those soldiers who were held in the concentration camps of Germany. He was so moved by their statements that when soldiers in black uniforms showed up, they knew bad things were going to happen. He was so moved by that that he asked Congress to enact a federal civil right, and he signed it into law, that no civilian force in black uniform may make or take police action against a citizen of the United States. So no U.S. citizen shall ever be reminded of the atrocities committed against U.S. forces, and so no U.S. citizen shall ever feel they're being controlled by a totalitarian force. Sure, but sure. You know, I, you know, I'd actually read about that before. What was the name of that? Uh, what was the name of that law they tried to pass? Well, he signed it in the federal law. 
What was it? I, I, I've only heard of it once before. So no civilian shall ever be reminded of the atrocities committed against U.S. forces at the hands of the SS. And so no. Well, sure. Historically, a black uniform is like the executioner, too. And every time about black uniform, uh, every time I talk about black uniforms, people say, "Well, why are you wearing a black shirt today?" Well, I guess because I'm a little bit overweight and it makes me look smaller. But no, no, I'm actually losing weight again, so not too much. But uh, probably a third of my shirts are black. It's not bad if you're wearing a black shirt. It's that when the police historically are wearing black uniforms, whether it's Mexico or Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia. In Soviet Russia, the secret police wore black uniforms. And it's done to intimidate. And, and, and then when they wear masks, they've had police chiefs come out and admit they wear those to intimidate people. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And it's a federal civil right that no civilian force in black uniform may make or take a police action against the citizen of the United States. Well, States now, now, now sir, what's the name of the law? I want to look that up. Well... I have looked and looked. I read it in a federal Miranda Rights Handbook about in 2007. It's a green paperback federal Miranda Rights Handbook, and I have tried to and tried to find that book. Guys, that that'll be on day. Scrib. Look up federal Miranda Rights Handbook, um, and 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 then you can flip through it online. Let's see if that's in there. You, you can also control R, even those those scans, and uh, down to black uniform. Or search uniform in the uh, in the is it the glossary? Would it be the? I can't even remember. Very interesting, sir. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I would like the American people to stand up and defend the Constitution. And I thank you for being a patriot. Well, God bless you, sir. I appreciate you calling in. Yeah, here's the article up on Infowars.com, and it's Google pressure cookers and backpacks get a visit from the cops. And it says, my husband said, no, my wife uses it to make quinoa. Quinoa? That must have been what the caller was calling about, and I couldn't understand him. Uh, and it says um, that... Um, well, well, we'll cover this article when we come back from break, but, but yeah, it's up on Infowars.com. Very, very bizarre. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. 
they are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Uh, quinoa is a grain uh, that you do uh, have to uh, cook under uh, high temperatures to make it edible. Uh, and it's uh, a Spanish uh, grain. And it was uh, uh, Michael Cantalano was looking for information online about pressure cookers, or Michelle. Or her husband, in the same time frame, was Googling backpacks for their children. Uh, Wednesday morning, six men from the Joint Terrorism Task Force showed up at their house to see if they were terrorists uh, with big shields, uh, armored vehicle, the combat outfits. And of course, they had the trendy little, you know, chick there to help uh, with the children in case they needed to be taken, uh, which uh, prompts the question, how did the government know what they were Googling? And it goes on to say they admitted basically that it's all run through the NSA database. And that just goes to what Snowden was saying. And folks, they probably are going to do a few of these now to make you think they're using it to go after terrorists. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's used to steal economic data and be able to fix markets on record. That's the main use, to target political enemies, to target the press, to target whistleblowers that know about corruption. I've told you that for over a decade with experts like the former producer of Nightline, James Bamford, that wrote Body of Secrets back in 2001 on it and countless others that we've had on. I mean, this is known. This has been in EU commissions, congressional commissions. So when General Alexander gets up there and says, we don't record or save anything, the Congress is like, excuse us? Because it's come out again today that Congress funded it, was all briefed, and knows full well the crime they've committed. Just like last week they voted to continue warrantless spying. Just like a court ruled two days ago, they can spy on you without a warrant now. And they're like, oh, you didn't hear? The Fourth Amendment means we don't get a warrant. And you're like, oh, okay. It's all part of just the complete over-the-top nature of all of this. And it really, really makes me want to throw up. And they asked him, why are you getting a pressure cooker? Why were you searching for a pressure cooker? And, and he said, well, we, we, you know, uh, my wife got it to, to cook. 
And then the officer went on to say, what in the hell, that's why the caller was saying and how rude that is, what in the hell is quinoa? Man, I tell you, I mean, uh, this is the type of stuff you deal with where a bunch of armed people show up, knock down your door, you come out with your kids, and it's all part of the delusion that there's these terrorists everywhere. The real Al-Qaeda terrorists were always run by our government, which is a criminal offshore bank that, of course, wants to use the threat to take our liberty. And it's totally disgusting. The article from the Atlantic Wire uh, is up on Infowars.com right now if you want to see it. Now let's shift gears into that area. Snowden granted one-year asylum in Russia uh, while they consider permanent asylum. And by the way, Russia spies on their people too. It's come out that they've got snooper systems that grab all the cell phone data out of the air and track you. That's because their telecommunications companies don't have it put in at the site. They just grab it out of the air the old-fashioned way. Uh, here, it's all wired directly in. The, the telephone company is the NSA. Even small companies have blown the whistle going, oh, yeah, they came in and made us. And small companies don't have lobbyists. So they don't get paid to put the grid in and make money. They didn't write the law. The little companies, I'm talking 10, 15 employees, this has come out, they've got to put in, say, $100,000 of equipment because the feds showed up and threatened them. We need to be able to pick up everything your people are doing on their email servers. Uh, you know. This is the type of stuff that goes on. And then they get up in line and go, we're not listening to nothing you do. Oh. Let's continue here. Snowden's father calls out Obama on Nuremberg crimes, a very powerful letter that went public yesterday. Kurt Nemo wrote about it. It's up on Infowars.com, pointing out he had a right and a duty to expose the, the crimes. Not just a, a right, he had a duty to not be complicit in them. Absolutely. And that's why they're worried about their own people not being part of this criminal takeover. Here's another one. NSA spying directly harms internet companies, Silicon Valley, California, and the future of the entire U.S. economy. Money Magazine points out. Well, yeah, because all that infrastructure costs billions and billions a year to put in. It passed the cost on, and then we can't be competitive with other countries that aren't the, quote, pivot, you know, of world data. We're not the pivot. We're the pivot of, the, of, of them spying it's so overdone, the face scanning cameras, the license plate reading systems, all of it. And then it goes into how it violates all these other laws and people don't want to do business here now because they know when you do something on anything hooked into the U.S. or European data banks, it's all stolen. In, just incredible. Here's another one. Declassified memo confirms Dragnet phone surveillance program was no secret from Congress. Yeah, they would do one fake warrant and then get, you know, 16 million phones tapped. Or they'd do one warrant and get 95 plus million, you know, emails, just on and on and on. And that's when they wanted to use something that was in it. They, they you know, it's like the FBI goes, we've launched 10 drones the last year in America. It's true. What they don't tell you is they've launched thousands of drone missions, but it's under the Department of Defense. So when the FBI says, yes, we had 10 drone operations, that was 10 run by the FBI. They don't do that. The Department of Defense does it for them. They play all these semantic games with you. Fugitive Snowden slips out of Moscow airport for secure base. This is former U.S. spy agency conductor Edward Snowden slipped quietly out of Moscow's airport. Thursday after Russia granted him temporary asylum. A expansion of powers. The president pledging to go around Congress. Wow, I was just talking about that. That's Fox News uh, with Joseph Farah earlier that he's just saying on everything. Guns, border, Federal Reserve, appointments. He said, I will not allow. Last week when I heard that, I was like, whoa, I will, I'll try to work with him. Can you see that uh, clip? Try to find it where it was. It'll be something like Obama says he won't allow Congress to stop him helping the American people. And he goes on to say, he goes, I, I, I meant to play it last week. He goes, I will not let them do that. I will do what needs to be done. I mean, I was hearing like Joe Stalin, Hitler, Mao. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, whole breach. I mean, oh, yeah, they're, they're now announcing it. Oh, goody, goody gumdrops. He's now pledging to go around Congress and do whatever he wants. I mean, we're not, they're like, yeah, we're spying on you. Yeah, we'll kill you if we want. Yeah, we'll arrest reporters. Yeah, we'll take your pension funds. Yeah, we'll, we'll do Obamacare even if they repeal it. We'll do whatever we want. And it's like, and you're like, hey, I got Homeland Security.
and we're blackmailing Congress. We got the NSA. And then they send out that creepy General Alexander to talk to the Black Hat Hackers Group in Vegas and go, Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Homeland Security. Very same voice, NPR hypnotism. And then people are like, what about the Constitution? What about you lying to Congress? We need freedom. This is freedom. Assimilate into the Borg. Just go to sleep. Here's your pod. When you wake up, you'll be one of us. I mean, it is just... We're, folks, I mean, we're living in crazy times is all I can say. And, 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 and notice there's articles every day about how I'm a bigger kook. Like, yeah, I bet Alex Jones thinks he's real cool since everything he said's coming out. Look at this clip of him goofing off a little bit. Yeah, because I'm real. There's no script here. I do whatever I want. I'm real enough to not want to be a slave, I'll tell you that, or, or, to, or to delude myself that I can be part of the establishment and cheat other people or screw other people and not have it come back on me. I instinctively, I spiritually, I fundamentally at a cellular level do not like to cheat people. And I just am always blindsided by how rat-like so many people are now, how, how, how people have everything going for them. And then they will cheat you or screw you or mess with you in like some weird hyper dominance thing that if they can just get something over on you, that will satisfy them. I am so free. And then I'm not jealous of people that have more money than me or quote more successful than me or have a better looking wife or you know girlfriend. Well, my wife's the most beautiful that I could ever imagine. That's why she's beautiful to me. They'll have like some trophy wife. They think that, you know, oh, look, look at my trophy wife. You're, you're upset by this. I, I, I am happy with everything. I, you know, if my kids don't get first place in the swimming race, even though they almost always do, I'm not upset about it. It's about them being healthy and learning to compete, but not about being a bad sport. And I just fundamentally have trouble dealing with all this. Let's continue here uh, with the Snowden news. Edward Snowden has left the airport and entered Russia for real this time. Fugitive Snowden slips out of Moscow airport to secure base. And then we just go over that entire stack of news. Look at this headline. NSA chief challenges hackers to build better surveillance program. Yes, help us export your jobs away faster. Help us arrest you for no reason. Help us say that we'll arrest you for free speech on the web. Help us. It's like, don't you want to be with me? Don't you want to stand up here in a stupid uniform and talk like a robot at people? Don't you want to be part of the winning club? But remember, you talk about what these crooks are doing that's illegal, it's espionage. But they spy on you illegally. Oh, well, that's for your security. That's for your, that's for your safety. You know, I said I'd go to your phone calls, and I'm looking for my stack of science news. I've got to hit the science news, but I also said I'd take your calls. So we're going to go to your, your phone calls here quickly in a moment. Um, but first off, I want to tell you about eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex at eFoodsDirect.com is where you find their biggest specials. Uh, right now, for every $329 you spend on food with eFoods Direct, you'll get a free 24-day food supply, the Patriot Pack, plus get free shipping. They're doing the free shipping again, unprecedented. That is such a big deal. Most storable food companies don't do this. eFoods is the best. This is a huge savings. If you've ever thought about having your own food supply, now's the time. Limit 10 per order, ladies and gentlemen. Stores up 25 years. Be ready for emergencies. Grab and go kits available. Easy to fix. Extremely portable. They have special diet packages. Just check it out. They are the leader in high quality storable foods. The best storable food out there. Efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex or follow the banners on Infowars.com. And privateinternetaccess.com. We hear news stories every day about NSA spying on people. PrivateInternetAccess.com provides cybersecurity for you, the individual, from the kleptocrats that run society. Encrypts internet connection so the pervs in government can't jack with what you're doing. Hides your IP address, providing anonymous browsing. Provides firewall protection, which uh, prevents data mining. I'm going to do this in uh, the Ted Knight voice. Provides uncensored access to the complete internet. Maintains no records whatsoever of computer activity. Can connect up to five devices simultaneously with one account. Can use service anywhere with internet connection. Even Aquaman can do that. Based in the USA, privateinternetaccess.com. And finally, infidelbodyarmor.com. Infidel Body Armor stops hundreds of rounds from AK-47, M4, 30-odd-6, and 308, and more. Chromatic Armor may stop six rounds, but what about the seventh? 
fits sizes medium to XXL, and I'll finish it in, in the Optimus Prime voice. Rated to level three armor. That's 888-608-6605. The longest lasting body armor is now cheaper than most ammo. InfidelBodyArmor.com. Autobots transform and roll out. InfidelBodyArmor.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That's a new form of plugging right there to make it entertaining. And those are great companies, and they're funding the InfoWars, so check them out today. All right, without further ado, Heather Locklear from California. Come on down. You're on the air. Is it me? Yes, Heather. Okay, sorry. Um, you bet. Um, I have one thing to say, and then after I'm done saying it, I, I have a question for you. And um, the thing that I have to say is I have... A really new listener. I've only been listening since maybe the end of June, not very long. And, um, ho no, hold on. Um, anyways, what was I going to say? Before Megatron, I, I am the leader. I'm sorry, go ahead, ma'am. Before I um, started listening to you and found you on YouTube, I read a book. Okay. And um, this book is really cool. Um, it's about this guy who had um, a near-death experience. And um, he saw, like, some people call it the end of the world, but, like, you know, the end times, basically. Like, he saw Well, that. every culture, they've got even mainline university studies, it doesn't matter if you're an atheist or a Hindu or a Christian, has the portal, the angels, that whole experience. There have been people that have been dead, you know, 10 minutes we've had on that I know personally who've come back, and literally the guardian angel was there, you're being sent back. There's a reason every culture in history has those stories. And even if you say it's something scientific, what is it? I mean, we're on a planet in deep space. Look at all how wild stuff already is. Someone who's spiritual just knows that there's more out there than our limited five sense awareness can pick up. And I feel sorry for those that haven't had experiences, uh, uh, you name it, that, that let them know there's more than meets the eye. What was interesting was um, he had this near-death experience and he saw this all this stuff that's going on, right? Well, after I read this, um, some of the things that was he had mentioned, um, I started, like, seeing all this stuff on YouTube, and it, like, went hand in hand. So, for example, like, the foreign invasion, like, he talks about that, how we're going to get invaded by foreigners, and... We're going to get invaded by helpers. What is that? Well, in the news, will there'll be helpers. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, he's got, it talks about the invasion of foreigners, and then it talks about, it's so crazy because um, when I read the book, I didn't, really, I, I didn't really understand what it meant until I started uh, finding out about chemtrails. And I was like, oh, my gosh, because, like, it, in the book, it's talking about how there's, we're going to get poisoned and how um, it's going to be little microscopic white, like, flakes. Like, you can't see them with your eyes. But, They're going to um, be vitamins sprayed by the helicopters? <laughs> right, but when I read that, I was just like, okay, well, that's crazy. But then when I started... Well, look, you're just going to go to sleep. The government's there to help you, ma'am. I hear you. Send me some info on emails. God bless you. Good to hear from you. Let's jam in Mario in Finland. Mario, you're on the air worldwide, sir. Hello. Hello, Mario. Alex, it, we have taken like eight months to reach you. Well, it sounds like you've reached us from a trillion miles away, sir. Go ahead. It is a trillion miles away because we have been cut off. Eight months ago, three times we were cut off, and this time we were cut off three times. Yeah, it sounds like a job for, sounds like a job for um, Mario. Um, Mario, so what's your point, sir? Go ahead. Uh, the point is that we wanted to reach out to you, Alex, all the way from Finland. We I tell you what, I want to hear from you. After months of trying, we're going to come back to you, Mario. Even if it's a bad phone, it sounds like Cylon Raiders attack, Cylon Raiders attack, wheelie ride right back on the other side of this quink break. Infowars.com is the enemy. You will be collectivized into the Borg. Take your shots. Go to sleep. Al Gore loves you. Al Gore loves you. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. Pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present.
Hands and Arms, 50 Cal Ammo Review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the InfoWar. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go back to Mario in Finland, who sounds like he's talking to us from Planet Cylon over the Deep Space Distran Communicator. Sir, go ahead and make your point. You're on the air. It's good to have you from Finland. I'm here, Alex. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Uh, now I know what it is. You're overdriving your oh, microphone. Go ahead. Fabulous. fabulous. Alex, Alex, actually, about seven months ago, uh, we tried you by mobile phone, and we got cut off about three times. And again today, we got cut off about Well, you're on the air, so. sir. To tell us the great transmission. We await your revelation. <laughs> Incredible. I, I, I'm so pleased to be able to give you the revelation. <laughs> Actually, we gave uh, an entry to um, the Alex Jones competition, and we were very pleased that you did this. You know, it was an incredible thing what you put out to the world. Well, thank you, sir. Tell us about your entry. Uh, it was actually Occupy U.S. Highway. And our whole idea was to give solutions. I mean, I think there were a lot of entries out there, but they didn't really provide solutions to the people. And our whole idea is to go around the United States for six weeks. We stop in every state, every city. We uh, interview people. Um, and no, I, th actually, I know I saw your entry. It's really good. Did it make the, the final 200 or so? Cool. Cool. No, I mean, I mean, did it? That. I mean, I mean, have you seen it on the Paul Revere site? Actually, we visited there, but for some reason, there were like the top 150 that showed up, and the other 450 were missing. Well, we're so going to be was, cycling. Guess, we're going to be cycling more of the films through the Paul Revere site in the next few months. We're going to promote everybody. But yeah, no, I saw it. Uh, we're going to make sure it gets back up there. Uh, let's put it on screen for folks that are watching uh, on television right now. Uh, so they can get the actual name of it. Occupy U.S. Highways, Operation Paul Revere. And uh, go ahead and skip forward in the film. This is kind of the intro right here. Yeah, no, I saw what you did. Great job. Uh, what else is on your mind, sir? Sorry? What else is on your mind from Cylon? Um, well, I, I've been following you for, you know, over 10 years now. And I, I really think you're spot on with everything. And I, I, I just want to say I like your Uncle Sam. That's really awesome. That was just a crazy, you know, step out. You know, we, we got a lot of ideas, but the problem is that we didn't have the finances behind it. And we'd like to go around the states for six weeks, every state. Uh, we're going to buy a couple of RVs and travel around. And we would really love if InfoWars could somehow become a part of that. Because I want to... Sir, I would love to I, work with people. And for radio listeners, they have Uncle Sam on the screen in the footage. It sounds somehow like bad to say, I like your Uncle Sam. All right, listen, I appreciate your call, sir. Good to hear from you from Cylon. Uh, boy, I tell you, I want to continue with calls. We'll do a little bit of overdrive. Uh, Amber, Aaron, and others. I haven't gotten to the science news yet today. I mean, massive solar flare nearly misses Earth. EMP disaster barely avoided. Now Lloyds of London warns of EMP. Artificial human ear grown in lab. Uh, uh, Harvard has humans controlling animals with their brains. Go ahead. <laughs> well, first, I have to tell you that I met you back at the Community Access Center years ago, and you were the first person who ever told me about aspartame. So I really appreciate that, and that's why I'm calling you to tell you about it. Well, I don't get any credit for that, though, because I'm not absolutely perfect in my own diet and things. So I'm not a high guru, though, of, of health, though. But you're very sweet. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's nice that I've met you before, Amber. What was on your mind? I'm sorry I went to you late. Oh, that's okay. Um, Basically, the last two years, I discovered what all the chemicals are in our food, and I have all the medical studies for it, and I'm just like, my heart's beating because I've been trying to get through to someone and tell people about it. Well, listen, let your heart pitter-patter a little longer. We're going to come right back, Amber, and I'll go to you. Stay there. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brother 
Fingers and Arms, 50 Cal Ammo Review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the InfoWar. That was Jan Napolitano bringing us in. Now that she's not the head of Homeland Security, she's doing voiceovers for us. And I think we are going to do an animation. Marcos Morales, one of our great graphics people, he's really good at those. Little green antennas on the, on the NSA director when he was like, Hello. And they're like, you know, we want freedom. You are getting freedom when we spy on you. You lied to Congress. I did not lie. Maybe they're like robots or something. I, I don't know. I'm being sarcastic, but I mean, it's just, it's a cult of crooks. Uh, Amber, calling from Texas. She wanted to talk about food additives. Yeah, they have like silicones and the stuff they make chicken McNuggets with. Uh, it just goes from bad to worse. Uh, go ahead and get into your points, ma'am. Yes, it is. Basically, the biggest lie we're told is that proteins and amino acids are good for us. I mean, some of them are, but the worst chemicals that cause all brain damage are also amino acids and proteins. That's just their chemical structure. But they are... Sure, they've been chemically manipulated. Like, they can argue what's an aspartame is no big deal, but it's the way the molecule's been strung together. It breaks down, basically, into formaldehyde in your stomach. Everybody knows that makes you go blind. Right, yes. And formaldehyde actually amplifies what it does in your brain. I mean, it's whenever we have a stroke or a head injury, the brain spits out amino acids that actually cause the damage. And those are the same amino acids we're eating. Hey, the, IQ, the IQ's gone way down. It's, it's, it's certainly not a doubt, yeah. Yeah, it all causes brain damage. And every single chronic disease is just a different type of brain damage according to what area of your brain was damaged. So none of them are even really diseases. They're just brain damage. But well, why not be brain damage? You just sit there in, a, in an easy chair listening to government people talk in droning mind control hypnotism voices. Right. It makes it a lot easier to believe things when your brain isn't working. And uh, natural flavor is the worst one. I mean, just think about that ingredient. What the heck is natural flavor? It's not natural, and it's not a flavor. It just excites the crap out of your brain where you taste flavor. It can be, it can be whatever they want it to be, and, and that's why generally you want to move to whatever is organic, non-GMO, whenever you can, and help create that market. Absolutely. What was the other point you wanted to get to, ma'am? And the other thing is those same chemicals are the same ones that are in vaccines. So we're all looking for different chemicals, but it's all the same ones. Oh, next you're going to say vaccines aren't good for us? Yeah, I know. And I actually, I have studies that I guarantee no one's ever seen because it, this is inf information control at its finest. I mean, if you want to know medical facts, you can't see them because they're in medical journals that only hospitals and universities get to see. Well, a lot of those medical journals are online, but you got to pay for the full ones. Uh, but then people do do reports on those with subsections. You should start a website or do a YouTube channel. You may have already been doing that, you know, showing this stuff to people. And you won't reach probably millions of people, but you'll reach thousands. And then if millions of people do what you're doing, we'll reach hundreds of millions. So, I mean, regardless, it, uh, I mean, have you gotten this info out to the people? Uh, I have to admit I'm a little weirded out because this is the exact proof that could take down pharmaceutical corporations in Monsanto. And I'm like, I don't want to get Well, killed. and actually, this <laughs> stuff, yeah, yeah, listen, I appreciate your call, ma'am. Uh, you know, everybody wants to call my show, though, with all the breaking news and info, which is great. We have millions of listeners. We're having an effect, but we're only one small part of it. I need everybody else to go out there. I mean, if you know something's going on and you have medical journal stuff, because it's all out there, people are then afraid to go talk about it and show it somebody might come after you. They're already coming after us. I mean, if they're not, it, it, and I'm not mad at you, it's just that, you know, people want to call here like it's safe to say it here, but you don't want to be public. We need people to get in the game against the New World Order, but good to hear from you. I appreciate your call. Uh, let's talk to Aaron in Washington. You're on the air. Hi, Alex. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right there, Trooper. Yes, um... I'm not really calling from Seattle as it has on your list. Otherwise, I'd be talking just like this. I love these impersonations you do. Well, no, like wait, it's not that. It's a NPR. Yeah. Mm. Everything is okay. Sorry, go ahead. In Seattle. No, it's not. It's not okay. And the reason I'm calling, uh, like I told you guys, uh, I wanted to talk, well, mainly to your listeners about the beginning of our nation, you know, is kind of a... There's two purposes for the foundation of our country, as you know. You know, and it goes back to Rosicrucianism and uh, the Masons. 
you know, wanting to spread democracy, you know, is their kind of their key. You know, it's the the occult uh, secret or the occult promise, right? And it is so over the top because at their core doctrine, it's Luciferian. And, you know, there's a lot of lower level, you know, fraternity members that don't know this. But you've got to understand, just like an agent, like all your agents, you know, that are listening to your show now, you know, there are high levels and they're just being used. You know, they're being used to work for someone else. And like you said, at the bottom of the rabbit hole or at the top of the pyramid, it's that same evil spirit. It's always been. And. Well, you know, well, I mean, to be specific, we, we've we've sold the films about the new Atlantis and America's Secret Beginnings and Francis Bacon and the Queen of England. And there is all of that going on. But then other things happen. You know, George Washington spoke out against the Illuminati. He was a Mason, but he was a great guy. And they had a real goal of freedom and empowering humanity. Uh, and so it's really competing organizations, even within what you'd call the Masons. You know, people say, oh, the Masons are all evil. Well, no, but at, at the higher levels of it, there are the secret adepts and basically an Illuminati version or a Merovingian version where they do teach that, you know, basically Jesus and Lucifer are one, two sides of the same coin. Uh, but that's not really what the even more ancient Masons taught. There were a bunch of mystery schools of, of farming and metallurgy and architecture. And you had to go through a bunch of initiations and be from the right family to even be in those. And so the, it was ancient times. It was pre-Christian. So you also had occultic stuff in there, which just means hidden. And so it means the hidden world. You just don't give everybody the knowledge and the data. What I'm doing is trying to reverse engineer all this and get people thinking about it to truly empower humanity so that they can't use secretness to only eliminate themselves. Because if they were really eliminated, they would want to empower everybody not just empower themselves to then dumb everybody else down. That's the opposite of illuminating. So see, they call themselves the illuminated ones, the Illuminate, but really they're trying to bring darkness to the world. Do you understand? Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, you know, it's all, you know, they're all falling for the same tricks as Adam and Eve fell for. Like you said, the knowledge of good and evil, right? I, I, I totally understand what you're saying about you study into this and you start, you know, feeling that evil power, and, you know. So anyways... So my, I guess I urge, you know, Christian brothers and sisters to look into it, you know, but to look at how to fight it and don't just look into all the bad things, but, to, you know, look at the hope, you know, that's at the end of it all and, you know, continue to seek and you will find it. And uh, I hear you, Aaron. Good to hear from you. I'm going to try to get everybody in in this segment. Al in Delaware, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Uh, I've got intel here about uh, oil reserves having peaked in 2005. Usable oil reserves that we know of as easy, low-hanging fruit has peaked in 2005. The Saudis are panicking over fracking. Uh, they have earthquakes. We've got all kinds of methane gas release. Uh, we know that the planet is in a cooling, uh, basically going back to the ice age because of the sun dimming. What do you make on this? And it's 2017, really, uh, the end of oil flows as we know it. Do you have anything on that? Well, again, this is incredibly complex. Oil is getting harder to get. They are having to do more and more expensive exploration. But there's also the pro-carbon tax people hyping artificial scarcity, exaggerating. But undoubtedly, instead of going 1,000 feet for oil, they're going 15,000 feet for oil. And there's a lot of big oil reserves that have been left alone that the globalists are trying to create an artificial scarcity in the North Sea, the stuff in Alaska, stuff all over, and then letting wildcatters go in or smaller companies that'll do the deep wells in places like Texas. So they're trying to bring in regulations to shut that down. And we got Dilling Pull on about it tomorrow. 97% of the uh, global warming con artist groups are funded by oil companies. That's why they always say you work for the oil companies. Because really the oil companies want all the smaller things shut down. I guess big oil companies are actually funding the anti-fracking films. So see, it, it, there's different groups. Big oil wants coal shut down because you could make gasoline out of that or, or a type of fuel more like diesel. Uh, so we, look, we've got a lot of energy. We are using a lot of it as well. Uh, I'd like to move on to other energies, but they're suppressing those, creating a counterfeit alternative energy system that's unsustainable and only gives money to their friends. So
So real progress is being held back by these oligopolies. Go ahead. And natural gas is not going to work in automobiles because it turns your car into a ticking time bomb. They don't have any solutions whatsoever. All the intel that I'm getting is coming from the congressional hearings that are being suppressed. In, well, We're in mode. I mean, you say congressional hearings that are being suppressed. Um, what I'm saying, sir, is, is that there are giant oil reserves they haven't tapped in huge government reserves around the world. Saudi Arabia has peaked in its oil production, but Russia is just going into its areas. They haven't drilled in half their country. It's just full of oil. There's oil pretty much anywhere you drill in areas of Russia. Uh, so what I'm saying is that they're creating an artificial scarcity to consolidate power right now and trying to shut down other energy reserves. You know about fuel they can create out of, uh, out of coal, right? That can be run in cars, you know about that? I heard that they're spraying coal with diesel fuel so that they can get these tax breaks from the government on what's called uh, this uh, um, uh, fake fuel. What do you call it? Fake fuel. Well, listen, I'll say this. Everybody that wants to talk about peak oil, it's going to happen because they're going to cut it off. I mean, there are, it's the oil companies that, that, that run the green movement. And they're going to, they've got you captured. We are on an oil-based system. They won't let us get out of it. I don't particularly like it. So you understand the people saying get off oil are the ones that are, when they say get off oil, they mean they're going to charge you so much for it, you're going to live in a 200-square-foot apartment. I don't know how to explain it to people. I'm trying to explain it. They're going to put taxes on petroleum-based plastics. God bless you all. Back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News.